Hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. If you remember in our series, we had a look at the radiator and inspected the condition of it. From the front, radiators usually look okay, but from the engine side, it is more apparent that there is corrosion between the fins. This is quite common. Taking the radiator out of here, I'll show you the condition of this radiator. It doesn't look too bad until you get a bit closer. Taking a more intimate look, you'll see that the fins have corroded between the tubes, making them very unstable. And also, this is an ineffective radiator for cooling. This will also be playing a symphony while the engine is running and vibrating the radiator and frame. What we're going to do in this video, and this will be in two parts, is replace the radiator and do some reverse flushing on the engine. <laughs> Okay, here's a tip to help you if you have trouble removing your viscous fan hub. Use a 24mm socket on the alternator pulley hub. This will hold the belt tight enough so you can undo the viscous fan. The hub will need to be removed so you can remove the cowling off the radiator. I'll show you here again, and this applies to undoing nuts on pulleys as well. You see how easy it is to hold the belt and then undo the nuts. We won't go as far as to be replacing the water pump in this video, but it's a trick to remember. The Defender has two bolts up here, which the nuts need to be removed from, and then once they're undone, you'll find that your cowling won't actually come off. Don't try to struggle or bend the cowling in any way. I'll show you a different way of doing this. Now, you need to remove the top hose first, and I'm using a pair of water pump pliers. This will crack off the seal that's been made between the rubber hose and the metal radiator fitting. What you'll find also is that you'll have fluid come out of the top hose, but not as much as what will be when we release the rest of the fluid from the radiator. Okay, so the top hose either removed or put out of the way, you can then go ahead and remove the radiator cowling. Just a little bit of a warning, there is a, two catches down the bottom of the cowling which will get caught. You can see this one here, they get caught on pieces underneath. So just be aware of that, don't pull it too hard. Right, so we need to undo now the bottom hose of the radiator. This is how you actually drain the system of fluid. Okay, so it's undoing the Jubilee clip and pulling it off. And of course you will have buckets underneath to collect the antifreeze. Don't dump it down the drain. You also have an air bleed hose at the top of the radiator on the left hand side as you're facing it. Be careful with this undoing this because it is actually quite fragile. Crack it off and pull it away. This will give you access to the oil feed hoses to the radiator because there's an oil cooler actually in the radiator all right so we're talking 24 mil spanner undo the nuts there's one top and another one at the bottom of the radiator here which is a little bit more awkward to get to just be careful of any corrosion that's holding the nut to the pipe okay once that's done that's just a wiggle to take it off and there's an o-ring on a swaged coupling here be prepared for the oil that will come out of the radiator that's left over. Okay, so once that's done, the pipe's out of the way. Put them in the up position so no oil is draining out of the engine while you're working. So before we can take the top of the radiator frame off, first thing we need to do is remove the grill. And there are eight screws that hold the grill in place just here. And this gives you access to the mounting bolts and the heads. So a little bit of lube on there. I like to use three in one because it doesn't evaporate. And then crack these four bolts off. This then you can remove the frame brackets. You have two bolts here. And on the other side, once you've removed the frame bracket, you have two bolts here. Remove them. Once the bolts are removed, you can then lift the radiator top out. Just make sure you don't lose any of the rubber grommets that are here in place. Okay, so it should be easy enough to remove the radiator. Sometimes you'll have to push the frame just slightly out of the way to let the radiator past. 
like so okay radiator is out and then you can check the condition of it like I've already shown you this radiator is wrecked this is not a serviceable item okay in the winter time maybe it won't be working but come the summer time you'll have problems so just to show you what a radiator can accumulate uh, this is gunge and I'm not sure whether it's corrosion or some sort of stop leak fluid that's been put in there so what we've taken the decision to reverse flush the engine and this will be done by pushing water fluid the opposite way round from which way the fluid was flowing while the engine was running if that makes sense to you so basically the first thing I'm going to do is take the hoses off the thermostat housing outlet oboe off and then get the thermostat out this will give a good flow of water through the engine the reverse way from which it usually flows and you can see by the state of this thermostat that this gunge is actually in the engine I think it's corrosion okay so with a hose pipe basically it's just letting the water flow the opposite way this will push any debris possibly some scale and corrosion out of the system I'm not worried about the hoses at all these can be replaced if necessary the bung plug for the drain on the block has been removed also paying attention to the header tank you'll see here that there is a collection of this gunge as well so it's right the way through the system worth replacing the thermostat if it hasn't been done for years or test it just to make sure it's all right remember in the winter it needs to be closed in the summer it needs to be opening okay so with that done the radiator can go back in and our new one is from bearmark number is on the screen the part number is on the screen for the 300 tdi defender so in part two i'm going to give you the heads up on some hose clips how to bleed up the system properly and what to look out for in the meantime we'll have to get rid of this old antifreeze somewhere safe where it's not going to pollute the environment so until then stay tuned